Well, hello friends. It's good to have you with us today. I'm glad you're watching this video because if you're watching this video, it means that you're interested in learning more about the Lord's Supper or Holy Communion, about what happens when we gather in worship at this table and the pastor holds up the bread and says that it's broken for you and holds up a cup and says that it's shed for you. What's all that about? Well, the video series that you're about to watch um, is going to explain that for you in some detail. And we're glad to be able to share that information with you. And then after those three videos that you watch, uh, there'll be another special section, which is a fun activity for the whole family. And we hope that you will take some time to work together to uh, take on that special activity. I'd like to give a special shout out to the Trosh Gribben family for being our family on camera. So again, welcome. Glad you're here. Lord of Life Lutheran Church looks forward to having you at the table. Hello, Sarah. Hi. I heard it won't be long before you start receiving Holy Communion at church. Is that true? Yep. I see. Now, do you know why we take communion? Nope. Well, I have a book that you might find helpful. Hmm, okay. Sorry, it's to your left. Oh. Is this a book about Jesus? Well, yes. That's because communion is all about Jesus. And it's also about someone else. Who? You. That's why this book is called A Place for You. Do you remember the story of how Jesus entered the world? Yeah, Jesus was born in a barn because there was no room in the inn. And his mom Mary was there, and Joseph, and some horses, and a donkey, and some sheep, and some chickens, and some camels, and some goats, and two turtle doves. Oh, and a cow. That's right. Jesus arrived as a little baby, just like you. And Jesus was a kid, just like you. And he ate a very special meal as well. Communion? No, it was a special Jewish meal called Passover. Mother, why do we do this? How is this night different from all other nights? To remember that God saved our people. Now, when Jesus grew up, he had a very big job to do. Do you know what that job was, Sarah? Carpentry? Well, yes, but he had an even bigger job given to him by God. Jesus was sent to show that God loves everybody. Really? Everybody? Everybody in the whole world. Um, there's more people in the world than in that picture. Well, you'll just have to use your imagination for the rest of them. Yeah, I guess so. And while you're imagining Jesus loving everyone, don't forget to include someone very important. Uh, who? You, Sarah. Jesus showed God's love in many ways. He <laughs> welcomed children. Let the little children come to me. <laughs> <laughs> He told stories about love. There was a man who had two sons. He taught about love. Love and do good to others, even those who hate you. Jesus made friends with people who were hated, made fun of, and not included. This made some people upset. Ugh, he's a Samaritan. Yuck, this makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> huh? <laughs> Blessed are the poor. They also didn't like when he preached God's love for the poor and hungry. <gasps> the poor? <laughs> <laughs> or when he healed people. You are made well. I can't believe he just did that. And he forgave sinners. Your sins are forgiven. Thank you, Jesus. He can't do that. Okay, can, can he do that? Well, he just did it. <laughs> Ugh, they sure were crabby. Very crabby. Yeah, I get crabby sometimes. We all do. But why are they upset with Jesus for loving everyone? Well, because they thought God only loves some people. I'm upset! He makes me angry. If he likes them, I don't like him. So, when did people start taking communion? We're getting to that. In Jesus' time, eating dinner with someone was very special. You are my friend. I want us all to be friends for the rest of our lives. Please pass the bread. 
Eating together was a way of saying to another person, I love you. Jesus ate with all kinds of people, young and old, rich and poor, people who were considered good and people who were considered bad. Eating with Jesus looks like fun. Well, you'd be invited too, Sarah. I would? Sure. There's room for everyone at Jesus' table. Jesus should not eat with bad people. I agree. He should only eat with good people like us. Who do they think were bad people? Well, people like Mr. Zacchaeus. He collected tax money for those who were in charge. People called him a bad person because he cheated them. Mr. Zacchaeus collected more money than he was supposed to and made himself very rich. One day, Jesus saw Mr. Zacchaeus sitting in a sycamore tree. Oh yeah, he was trying to see Jesus. <laughs> yes, and then in front of everyone, Jesus called out to Zacchaeus and said, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. Ah! After that, Jesus went to the home of Mr. and Mrs. Zacchaeus for dinner. By having dinner with Mr. and Mrs. Zacchaeus, Jesus was telling them, You are my friends, and you are part of God's family. Mr. Zacchaeus was so happy Jesus loved him that he returned the extra money he'd taken. He also gave half of everything he owned to the poor. Half of everything? That's a lot of giving. Jesus' love made big things happen. Who's that? That? Oh, he's a character we made up who wants to learn more about Jesus. Hey, so do I. So did a lot of people. Huh? In fact, one day when Jesus was teaching about God's love, over 5,000 people came to listen. But you know what's funny about people, Sarah? They have armpits. Well, yes, that is pretty funny. But in this story, it's that people were so excited to see Jesus that they apparently forgot to bring their lunch. Or maybe they didn't have a lunch to bring, but they all started to get hungry. Very hungry. <laughs> So, did they order pizzas? They didn't have phones or pizza or delivery back then. What? No pizza? It was a simpler time. What did they do? There was a little bit of fish and bread, but not nearly enough to feed 5,000 people. However, when Jesus gave thanks to God and started to share the food, suddenly there was enough for everyone. All had enough to eat. No one was left out, which made almost everyone very happy. Almost everyone? Who? Oh, I know. The crabby people didn't like it. Some of these people don't deserve free food. I am really upset. Disgusting. Completely and utterly disgusting. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the leftovers filled 12 baskets, so there was more than enough food for everyone. Just like Jesus has enough love for everybody. Oh, I see someone is paying attention. But what about communion? Well, to understand communion, you first have to understand what Jesus was all about. So communion is about sharing food and Jesus loving us? That's a good start, Sarah. That's a good start. Let's talk about the origins of communion. Origins means the beginning of something. That's right. Where did you learn that? I don't know. Oh, well, anyway. One night, Jesus and some of his friends gathered for the special meal called Passover. After they had eaten, Jesus gave thanks to God and broke some bread. Then they all shared the bread and a cup of wine. Sharing bread in a cup? That sounds like communion. You might call it the first communion. And then Jesus said to his friends, Whenever you share this bread and cup, I will be with you, feeding you, loving you, forgiving you. What? Why would Jesus say that? You know, Jesus' friends were wondering the same thing. You see, Jesus knew that the crabby people and the people in charge were planning to get rid of him very soon. 
<laughs> oh no, is this the part when Jesus dies? Sadly, yes, Sarah, it is. Jesus was crucified. And when Jesus died on a cross, the crabby people and the people in charge were glad. They thought Jesus would no longer be around to upset them. A friend of Jesus placed his body inside a tomb, and a stone covered the doorway. Then, on the third day, God raised Jesus from death to life. Some women who were friends with Jesus were the very first to find this out. They went to the tomb and found it empty. And then, two men in shining clothes appeared. <laughs> and they said, Do not be afraid. Jesus is not here. He is alive. Go tell your friends. The living Jesus appeared to all of his friends. He taught them more about God's love. And he ate with them. <gasps> then, after telling his friends to continue the work he had started, he left them and returned to God. He left them? Weren't they sad? Yes. But Jesus' friends also remembered his promise that he would be with them whenever they shared the special meal. After Jesus left, his friends began to meet in people's homes. They brought food for the special meal and for the poor. They sang songs, told stories about Jesus, prayed for the whole world, and shared greetings of peace. Then a leader gave thanks to God and broke the bread into pieces. All ate the bread and drank from the cup. They were happy because Jesus was with them. Jesus kept his promise. And everyone shouted, Amen! Amen. Then the friends of Jesus went out and showed God's love in many other ways. They brought bread to the sick, and the poor, everyone who did not have enough to eat. They told everyone about God's love. God loves all of us. Are you sure? Yes! They taught each other to love and forgive. Let us love one another as God has loved us. What a great idea! They healed the sick. Jesus makes you well. <laughs> they forgave sins. Your sins are forgiven. Did he do that? He just did. Well, then I'm asking for forgiveness, too. They welcomed outsiders and left out people. We want you to come for dinner. <laughs> I bet the crabby people didn't like that. Oh, no, Sarah. Not at all. Ew. They're inviting her? I thought we put a stop to this. Mm -hmm. It's like Jesus is back. <gasps> hmm, my, it does seem like their plan backfired, doesn't it? Yeah, now there are lots of people all over the world following Jesus' example. Well said, Sarah. And all of them spreading Jesus' message of God's love and welcoming others into Jesus' family. And being a part of Jesus' family means you have a place at Jesus' table. Hey, this is like dinner with my family. It is, but that Jesus' table has even more people at it. All kinds of people. Children and adults, babies and old people, poor and rich, people called good, people called bad, left out people, people with disabilities, people with big hair, people with no hair, darker skinned people, lighter skinned people, other kinds of people with different backgrounds, abilities and interests. Everyone has a place at Jesus' table. The family of Jesus wants you to come. Come to the meal of Jesus. There is a place for you. What about my little brother? Yes. He's pretty naughty. <laughs> that doesn't matter. And annoying. <sighs> There's a place for everyone. And when you share the bread and wine, be sure to give thanks for the family of Jesus which surrounds you and give thanks for the promise of Jesus. You are a precious child of God. I will always love you. I will be with you, loving you and forgiving you all the days of your life.
Was Jesus talking to me? Of course. Jesus' promise is for all of us. And after the meal, Jesus will go with you. He will help you to love all people, even when it's hard. So you can share your things with others. Here. Oh, thanks. And forgive others, even kids who have been mean. I forgive you. You want a cookie? <gasps> and to say no to things that will hurt people, earth, air, water, plants, and animals. No! And to say yes to things that will help them. Yes! yes! And to share food, clothes, and money with those who are in need, even if it means fewer toys, clothes, or things for yourself. I got this with my allowance. This is all for the food bank. And to bring joy to the sick, sad, and lonely. Happy birthday! <laughs> Why, thank you. And to be kind to people who are different and those who are laughed at or left out. Hey! <laughs> Want to come play? <laughs> and... Psst, come here. God loves you. To tell others about God's love. We're supposed to do all of that? It won't be easy, but you'll also have your church family helping you by praying for you and loving you. And if you're crabby and not being loving, Jesus and your church family will forgive you. With Jesus and your church family, you will dream of a day when Jesus will gather all living beings together, creatures that fly in the air, swim in the water, walk on the earth, and crawl underground. This joyful gathering will include people of every kind, both happy people and crabby people, who will no longer be crabby. All will be safe. All will have food. All will have a home. All will worship God. And all will know that Ooh, there... I know. Go ahead. There's a place for you because God loves everybody. That's right. Even my little brother. Trough Groovins. I'm Troy. I'm Maria. And I'm Teresa. And we're here to bake. Today we're making some communion bread. Um, so I brought some ingredients from home, so some of mine are mixed together, but we'll have some whole wheat flour and um, white flour, and that's mixed together. Um, we're going to have some oil. We'll use some little bit of cooking oil. We'll use a little bit of salt, a little bit of baking powder, some honey to sweeten it up a little bit, a little bit of water, and some cooking spray, and that's it. So it's a pretty simple recipe, um, doesn't require a lot, and pretty tasty too. Um, so you start by measuring your flour again some whole wheat flour and some white flour i'm going to dump mine into the bowl you measured that beforehand i did measure and i cut my recipe in half this time so it's a little bit less but so the next thing we need is some oil i'm going to do a tablespoon of oil Teresa, do you want to pour this in sure. actually you know what we should do our we'll wait on this we're going to have that there we'll put our, um, we're actually going to mix all our dry ingredients first. So we'll do some baking powder. Tracy, you want to dump that in? And we'll do a little bit more. And there we go. So there goes the baking powder, and then we're going to add the salt. Troy's got the salt. And we'll do a teaspoon of that. Teresa, you want to dump that in? There goes our salt. 
And we're gonna mix our dry ingredients. You wanna mix for me? Stir them around. Get the baking powder and the salt all mixed in. Okay, that looks good. Um, now we can add our oil in. And then we can eat it? No, I don't think it would taste very good yet. We're gonna blend that oil into the flour. And then we're gonna do some honey. And we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a fourth a cup for this. And to make the honey come out of our measuring cup a little easier, I'm just gonna spray it with some cooking spray. You want to squeeze it in? That's quite a trick with cooking spray. Yeah, well, makes the sticky stuff come out a lot easier. Once we get our honey. That's a sweet idea. Yeah. Once we get our honey into the measuring cup, we're gonna blend it into our water over here. How's it coming, Teresa? You need help squeezing? This takes a little bit. There we go. We got our honey. We're gonna mix that into our water. You wanna pour that in there? Okay, a little bit, last bits of honey out of there. Oh, and our we did, I should mention, we preheated the oven to 375. That's another good idea early on. Yep, so that is heating up. We're gonna mix our water and our honey just a bit. Stir that around. And then we're gonna put it all together with our flour mixture. Dump that in. And we'll mix that up. You wanna stir it up? Start it up. It might be a little bit sticky, but. And we just stir and stir and stir. So we get all the flour worked in. A little harder to stir. How's it going, Teresa? Good. Good. I'm gonna take over so you can kind of see here it's flowers getting stirred in. Just keep working it and probably at some point you will have to get your hands a little bit messy to work all this dough together. So I think we'll do that. And if it's too dry, you can always add a little bit more water, which we might do here in a minute. We'll see. We can knead this flour in. We'll see if we get a little bit more of this in there. And so now it's soon time to be make, making it into our um, circles in the shape we have for our communion bread. I'm gonna get just a touch more water quick. Pour that in a little bit dry. And the recipe says that you can split it up into five equal parts, um, make about five loaves of communion bread. I'm gonna do a little bit less than that today, but. You have a half batch too, right? Yep, I'm making a half batch. So is that five for a full batch or a half yep. batch? Yep, five is for the full batch. So mm -hmm. I'll probably do about three and we'll be kind of rolling them or patting them into um, about eight inch circles. And mm -hmm. it's kind of the beauty of it. it. It doesn't have to be too perfect. Um, so we have kind of make your equal portions of dough. We're gonna put a little um, cooking spray on our pan so it doesn't stick when we bake it. And then you can either pat it out right on the cooking sheet or use a cutting board. I brought a little rolling pin 
You can roll it. Oh, thank you, Troy. Move some of my stuff there. And you can kind of just roll it, pinch it, shape it. However, it works to make kind of a circle. If you like thicker communion bread, don't roll it out quite as much. And you can put that right on there. And then the recipe kind of tells us that you end up scoring or kind of lightly drawing a knife through the bread so you have different sections. Do a big cross through the middle and small crosses on each side. Mm. Like that. Lovely symbolism. Yeah. Then it's easy for the pastor to, you know, stand up there and break his communion bread, I think, too. And I roll it out. And put that one on there. Lines. And it doesn't have to be a perfect circle. The shape doesn't matter that much. And I'll roll out one more. have to find another baking sheet. Hmm. Thought maybe I could fit three, but not gonna happen. So oh Troy's gonna are you gonna make it work for me? see what we can do. We'll see if we can't sneak it in there. We'll go for it. Probably should have another sheet, but we'll make it work with our one. Draw our crosses. There we go. Kind of work that around there. So there is our three loaves of communion bread. Pretty easy to make, and then we just take them to the oven and we'll put them in there for 15 to 20 minutes, and they should be good. All right, so after 15 to 20 minutes, you can check your oven, and your bread should look kind of golden brown, and ours is a little bent because we shoved it all on one pan, but there we go. And someone is excited about maybe trying some communion bread, too. Yeah, me. But, yeah, and uh, some yummy loaves of communion bread you can make at home.